With me from Botswana Diamonds this afternoon, I'm joined on Skype by James Campbell. James, a very good afternoon. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Andrew. Thank you very much for having me. Hey, look, it's our pleasure. Yourselves and vast resources today telling us you've received a preliminary geological assessment of the heritage concession within the, the Morangi Diamond Fields of Zimbabwe. Tell us a little bit more about this, James. So we're delighted to make this announcement on our desktop study. This goes back uh, from when we originally signed the Memorandum of Understanding with VAST. Uh, and then two weeks ago, we signed the detailed uh, arrangement with VAST. And we committed to rapidly moving forward with this project. And the first step in, in any form of geological uh, exploration is a desktop study. And we're very pleased to announce that this heritage concession has the potential to host both the uh, Mkondo conglomerate unit, which is known to host very high diamond grades, as well as secondary, more modern alluvial diamonds. So essentially, this is a tick box for further work. Tell us a little bit more about the, the concession itself. I mean, it's within an area that's, that's quite well understood, isn't it? It is uh, very well understood. Uh, over 60 million carats of diamonds have been mined from the Murunj diamond fields over the last 20 or so years. And essentially the host rock for these diamonds are the Omkondo conglomerate, which is over a billion years old. So it's a very, very old uh, paleo conglomerate. The origin of these diamonds, the Kimberlites, uh, uh, which uh, basically imparted the diamonds into the conglomerate, have long since disappeared. So these diamonds you can pick up on the surface, uh, and they also manifest themselves in, in secondary uh, Kalahari age and more modern diamond deposits across this particular uh, diamond field area of which we have one of the concessions uh, through our arrangement with VAST and the Heritage Concession. Just tell, tell, tell me a little bit more about the, the deal that you've made here with VAST Resources. We've, we've got two separate deals, Andrew. We've got one deal covering the Moranji Diamond Fields, uh, and we have another deal uh, which is in, uh, in gestation covering the remainder of Zimbabwe. Uh, the latter, the intention is to have a 50-50, uh, but with Moranji where Vast and through its predecessors, African Consolidated Resources have done a huge amount of work uh, that we have 14% of an SBV with Vast Resources itself, and, and they have a 75-25% uh, arrangement with the local community. And in terms of funding, the first million dollars of funding from an exploration perspective is done on a shareholder loan from Vast into the SBV. So you've teamed up with some, some pretty, pretty good companies here. You, you happy with the arrangement? I'm delighted with the arrangement. Vast has got a long history uh, in Zimbabwe, particularly uh, with their gold operations and with their predecessor company, African Consolidated Resources, uh, which is one of the original discoverers of the Moranj Diamond Field. And of course, our board and, and myself have a long history in Zimbabwe. Uh, my chairman, Dr. John Teeling, uh, one of his first companies was a company called Zambezi Gold, which was looking to develop gold operations in Zimbabwe. And, and myself, uh, through De Beers and through African Diamonds and, and various other companies I've worked with, have a long history of working in Zimbabwe. And in fact, we believe that not only is there fantastic potential uh, within the Moranj Diamond Fields itself, but because Zimbabwe is relatively underexplored, uh, particularly compared to many of uh, the surrounding countries in Africa uh, that it will host uh, potential for commercial kimberlites outside of Morangi. Well, give us a quick recap here. As far as uh, Morangi fields are concerned themselves, the, as, as far as the work program and the plan here, what, what can we expect? Uh, the, the first step is geological mapping. Now, following the desktop study, we'll get boots on the ground and we'll start confirming that the presence of the, uh, the paleo gravels and the more modern gravels this will be rapidly followed by a, a series of geophysics uh, and drilling uh, to look at the, the vertical extent of these gravels. And then assuming all being positive, and we have no reason to believe anything but this, we'll move into trial mining or, or bulk sampling. And with this, this will be, able, be uh, how we will generate our inferred resource, as well as generate some much needed income too as well. And you'd be keen to, to get this moving as, as quickly as possible? Absolutely. Uh, I actually hope to be in Zimbabwe next week to start getting things moving. Well, did you had a meeting last week? You were meeting with the, uh, at the African Mining Summit, speaking to the Deputy Minister of Mines. They're quite a promising discussion from what I understand. 
it was a promising discussion. The meeting was actually held in Gaborone, which was lovely. Uh, the Minister of Mines of Botswana uh, hosted the meeting, and we had the ministers and deputy ministers of mines from many various African countries. Uh, and most notable in terms of what we're talking about today, the deputy minister of mines was there from, from Zimbabwe, and, and he spoke about the platinum and, and diamond fiscal regimes in the process of being reviewed. Uh, many of your listeners will know that at the moment uh, there is a 51% state requirement for both platinum and diamonds, but nothing for everything else. And I think the government under the, the new dispensation are uh, having a hard look at this so as to uh, ha create greater attraction uh, for overseas investors. Well, a lot to look forward to. James, thanks for your time. Nice to see you. Thank you very much indeed for your time too, Andrew. A great pleasure.